Hello, my name is Dr. Aidan Elliott, and this is the Complete Guide to Shakespeare. Welcome to this visual summary of Macbeth. It's designed to help you memorise and easily recall the key events of the play. This will be helpful in exams when you are asked to make links between themes or to discuss how the characters are presented throughout the play. I've given each act a name to summarise the most important aspects, namely the road to temptation, to the crown, to insecurity, to tyranny and finally the road to death. The play begins with three witches telling us that fair is foul and foul is fair, which means that what appears to be good will be bad and vice versa. Now this is a recurring theme throughout the play, often referred to as appearance versus reality. And the witches say that they plan to meet Macbeth after a battle. Now in this second scene we learn about this battle. Scotland is under attack from the rebel MacDonald, from the Thane of Cawdor and from the Norwegian army. And note that Macbeth is a hero at this point. He beheads MacDonald and with the help of Banquo defeats Cawdor and the Norwegians. And when King Duncan hears this he says he will reward Macbeth by making him the Thane of Cawdor. Now the three witches meet Macbeth and tell him three things. One, that he is the Thane of Glams, which is his existing title. That he is the Thane of Cawdor, which we know is now true from the previous scene, but he doesn't yet know this. And that he will be the king in the future. Shakespeare here uses dramatic irony, where we know more than the characters. Banquo then asks about his future, the witches tell him that he won't be king, but that his descendants will be. Macbeth overhears this. When a messenger then confirms that Macbeth is now also Thane of Cawdor, it leads him to think about the next prophecy being king. And interestingly, the thought that comes into his head is that he will need to murder the king. As we will see, there is a reason for this. In the next scene, Duncan announces that his own son Malcolm will become the next king, and we now realise why Macbeth thought of murder. It's the only way that he can become king, because this position is handed down from father to son. Meanwhile, Lady Macbeth has heard of the witch's prophecies in a letter from Macbeth. When she then learns that King Duncan is coming to stay at their home in Venice Castle, she calls on evil spirits to fill her full of cruelty so that she can help murder the king. She also says Macbeth must deceive everyone by pretending to be friendly. She says he should look like a flower, nice and harmless, but be the serpent under it. And the very next thing that we see is Duncan arriving at Inverness Castle saying how pleasant it is and being greeted warmly by Lady Macbeth. Little does he know she's planning to murder him. Another example of dramatic irony. But now Macbeth hesitates because he realises that actions have consequences that can't be controlled and he worries that if he murders Duncan someone might do the same to him. But Lady Macbeth says that he's a coward and that if she had made such a promise, she would rather kill her own child than break the promise. She finally persuades her husband by saying that she'll get Duncan's guards drunk and then they can kill the king and blame it on the guards. Macbeth is finally convinced. As Act 2 opens, Banquo and his son Fleance meet Macbeth. This reminds us that Banquo's descendants are a threat to Macbeth because they might become kings in the future. And when Banquo and Fleance leave, Macbeth sees an imaginary dagger in the air, dripping with blood. Then he hears Lady Macbeth ring a bell, telling him the way is clear, and he leaves to commit the murder. When Macbeth returns, he accidentally brings the murder weapons with him. He's consumed by guilt and thinks blood will always be on his hands, metaphorically. Lady Macbeth takes the daggers, returns them to Duncan's room, and when she returns, she says a little water will wash the evidence away and no one will suspect them. Of course, we'll discover later this is not true. But now there is a knock at the doors of the castle. This is the first appearance of Macduff, who discovers that the king is dead and raises the alarm. Macbeth goes to see 
and kills the men who were guarding Duncan and blames them for the murder. Duncan's sons, Malcolm and Donalbane, quickly leave Scotland, fearing for their own lives. Nature now reflects the disorder in Scotland, with huge storms reported, and we also hear that Macbeth has gone to be made king. Macduff at this point says he won't attend the coronation and goes home to Fife. At the beginning of Act 3, Macbeth is already worried about the threat from Banquo's descendants, which is why he orders the murder of Banquo and his son Fleance. And in the next scene, he expresses his anxiety about Banquo and Fleance to Lady Macbeth, saying, Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. These scorpions metaphorically represent the deadly threat to his security that he's thinking about. And in the very next scene, although the murderers kill Banquo, Fleance escapes, so the threat from Banquo's descendants remains. Meanwhile, Macbeth is holding a feast to celebrate becoming king. But when he discovers that Fleance has escaped, Macbeth feels like he's imprisoned. Then the ghost of Banquo appears, but only Macbeth can see him, so he appears to be mentally disturbed. The ghost disappears, Macbeth recovers and drinks a toast to Banquo, at which point the ghost of Banquo reappears. But again, as only Macbeth can see him, the guests appear to think that Macbeth is talking to himself. Macbeth is now racked with anxiety about the security of his position and decides that the only way he can put his mind to rest is to speak to the witches again about the future. And we immediately meet Hecate, who's the goddess who rules over the witches, and she decides that they will give Macbeth new prophecies that will make him think that he is safe, but that will lead him on to destruction. And by the end of Act 3, the various characters are now openly questioning how Duncan died and suspecting that Macbeth was involved. And we also learn that Macduff has gone to England to ask for help in overthrowing Macbeth. Beginning of Act 4, Macbeth meets the witches for reassurance about his future and they tell him three things. They say, beware Macduff. They say, none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. And thirdly, that Macbeth shall never be beaten until Burnham Wood moves towards Dunsinane Castle, which is where Macbeth has now gone to live as king. Now, when Macbeth asks whether Banquo's heirs will reign in Scotland, the witches show him a procession of eight kings all descended from Banquo. Macbeth then learns that Macduff has also fled to England, and all of this makes Macbeth even more insecure. And at the very next thing we see is Lady Macduff talking about how her husband lacks courage for deserting her. Macbeth's agents arrive, murder her son, and then kill her, as a punishment for Macduff's disloyalty in going to England. Meanwhile, in England, Macduff eventually persuades Malcolm, the son of Duncan, to return to Scotland to join the fight against Macbeth and then be crowned king. Macduff then discovers that Macbeth has killed his children and his wife. He refers to these deaths as all my pretty chickens and their dam. He vows to avenge their deaths. By now, the psychological trauma of killing Duncan is haunting Lady Macbeth. She's sleepwalking and trying to get the imaginary blood off her hands. Meanwhile, Malcolm and Macduff are to meet at Burnham Wood near Dunsinane Castle. And we also hear that Macbeth's power is waning. Now does he feel his title hang loose about him, like a giant robe upon a dwarfish thief. Macbeth tries to reassure himself that he cannot be beaten, but when he says, my way of life is fallen into the seer, the yellow leaf, like yellowing autumn leaves, his hope of remaining king is gradually dying. Malcolm then tells his soldiers to break branches off the trees in Burnham Wood and to carry them as camouflage whilst they walk towards Dunsinane Castle. At this point, Macbeth hears that Lady Macbeth is dead. 
Time itself becomes tedious. This is the tomorrow and tomorrow speech. His life is not glorious as he expected it to be, but meaningless. Then a servant says Burnham Wood is moving towards Dunsinane. We know it's the camouflage soldiers, but Macbeth thinks that one of the prophecies has come true. Then Macduff, Malcolm and the English soldiers prepare to attack Dunsinane, and Macbeth feels like a bear chained to a post being attacked by dogs. But he still thinks he can't be killed by any man of woman born. And so, finally, Macbeth comes face to face with Macduff, who reveals that he was not strictly born of a woman because he was born by a caesarean section where the mother's stomach is cut open. Macbeth now realises that the witches were equivocating. They were playing with words to obscure their real meaning. They fight and Macbeth is killed. Macduff then brings in the head of Macbeth, mirroring the death of Macdonald, who was beheaded by Macbeth, if you remember, at the beginning of the play. Macduff hails Malcolm as king, and this restores the natural order. Now lastly, I'd recommend that you go back over this video again at least once before you sit your exam, because the more you see the map, the better you will be at recalling it and visualising the events during your examinations. So, I hope this brief video has given you a way of memorising the main moments in Macbeth, and that it will be useful to you when revising for exams, or when reading and watching the play. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe now, so that you never miss any of my future posts.